And good afternoon once again. Here you see Columbia, the space shuttle, parked uh, on the ramp there at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California after a flight of seven days, one hour, nine minutes, and 40 seconds, a little less than two hours ago. And here is Challenger, the successor to Columbia, on board the 747, which will carry it piggyback to the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, for its first mission, which will come in January. So there is the second of the orbiter spacecraft. And here is the one that was the prototype of the uh, spacecraft. This is the Enterprise, the one that was uh, used for those simulated missions, carried aloft on uh, top of a 747 and then dropped in order to test the uh, landing capabilities of the uh, spacecraft. So we're kind of hip deep in orbiters out there today. The crowd you see is waiting for President Reagan, who is expected to come out very shortly now, to uh, greet the crowd and to say some nice things about America's commitment to further exploration of space. Earlier today, about uh, an hour or so ago, the president was actually at the bottom of the ramp as the space uh, astronauts returned from space. Mattingly and Hartsfield came down the uh, ramp to be greeted by the commander-in-chief and the first lady. This was the first time that Mr. Reagan has seen a uh, space shuttle return. And this is uh, Mattingly and Hartsfield coming down now to the applause of all those gathered down below. An exchange of salutes between the Commander-in-Chief and the astronauts, the President shaking hands with Mattingly and with Hartsfield, and Mrs. Reagan giving each one of them a kiss. This is a great day for NASA, of course, to have such a flawless landing on the 4th of July with a huge crowd there and to have the President himself on hand to witness it. They gave him uh, a space shuttle cap, which he did not keep on for very long. And then they sort of took him on a tour to uh, walk around and show him the uh, various parts of the spacecraft, which completed a mission of uh, some 2.8 million miles on this particular flight, but has now weathered some 8 million miles, all told, in space. This was the fourth and final test flight for Columbia. But Columbia, of course, will be the spacecraft that will carry astronauts on the first operational flight in November. The President and Mrs. Reagan uh, moved up for a good close-up look at the spacecraft, Mattingly and Hartsfield pointing out various features of it to them. Mrs. Reagan does what just about everybody would like to do, walk up and touch the thing. <laughs> We're about ready now for the president. Uh, what you're watching is videotape of about an hour ago, but we're waiting now for the president, and here he is, ascending the uh, rostrum there, stepping up on the platform in front of the Enterprise, which, as we've said, was the prototype for the uh, orbiters. The band playing hail to the chief, and the president standing there surrounded uh, by uh, Mattingly and Hartsfield, the two heroes, who uh, have just completed the fourth flight of Columbia, the space shuttle. Crowd waving American flags. We understand there are some 30,000 folks out there in the hot sun. Among them, Gene Cernan and Lynn Scher. Frank, I think these people are as excited to hear the president as they are to see the landing and to see the Challenger take off. Gene and I have been awed watching it go by on top of the 747. They have it parked down at the end of the ramp, don't they? At the end of the runway. It, it's poised down there, ready for takeoff here in a few short moments. And, uh, you know, we have all three shuttles, Enterprise, Columbia, and uh, Challenger, whose uh, namesakes themselves have played a great deal in the development and history of this country. I think the president is about. NASA's administrator, James Beggs, now is about to introduce it the president. It is indeed a very special day for the nation's space program. Mr. President, in your inaugural address, you reminded us that it is time we realize that we are too great a nation to limit ourselves to small dreams. And then you told us we have every right to believe in heroic dreams. Today, this marks the culmination 
of 10 years of very disciplined and relentless drive towards such, just such a dream, the construction of a national space transportation system which will give us the benefits of space to everyone on Earth. Just 15 months ago, the Columbia took off on its first flight, and the nation's heart beat faster, and the world wondered and watched as it came back to Earth. And today, with the successful completion of the fourth flight of Columbia, we are ready to put the space system to work, and it will earn its way. And so, Mr. President, we stand ready to make heroic dreams come true, and we thank you for your support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. TK and Hank, you can see we've gotten well acquainted already. You've just given the American people a 4th of July present to remember. I think all of us, all of us who've just witnessed the magnificent sight of the Columbia touching down in the California desert, feel a real swelling of pride in our chests. In the early days of our republic, Americans watched Yankee clippers glide across the many oceans of the world, manned by proud and energetic individuals, breaking records for time and distance, showing our flag and opening up new vistas of commerce and communications. Well, today, I think you have helped recreate the anticipation and excitement felt in those home ports as those gallant ships were spotted on the horizon heading in after a long voyage. Today, we celebrate the 206th anniversary of our independence. Through our history, we've never shrunk before a challenge. The conquest of new frontiers for the betterment of our homes and families is a crucial part of our national character, something which you so ably represent today. The space program in general, and the shuttle program in particular, have gone a long way to help our country recapture its spirit of vitality and confidence. The pioneer spirit still flourishes in America. In the future, as in the past, our freedom, independence, and national well-being will be tied to new achievements, new discoveries, and pushing back new frontiers. The fourth landing of the Columbia is the historical equivalent to the driving of the Golden Spike, which completed the first transcontinental railroad. It marks, it marks the, our entrance into a new era. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ships will be fully operational, ready to provide economical and routine access to space for scientific exploration commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security. Simultaneously, we must look aggressively to the future by demonstrating the potential of the shuttle and establishing a more permanent presence in space. We've, we've only peered over the edge of our accomplishments. Yet already, the space program has improved the lives of every American. The aerospace industry provides meaningful employment to over a million of our citizens, many working directly on the space program, others using the knowledge developed in space programs to keep us the world leader in aviation. In fact, technological innovations traced directly to the space program boost our standard of living and provide employment for our people in such diverse fields as communications, 
computers, health care, energy efficiency, consumer products, and environmental protection. It's been estimated, for example, that information from satellites has saved hundreds of millions of dollars per year in agriculture, shipping, and fishing. The space shuttle will open up even more impressive possibilities, permitting us to use the near weightlessness and near perfect vacuum of space to produce special alloys, metals, glasses, crystals, and biological materials impossible to manufacture on Earth. Similarly, in the area of national security, our space systems have opened unique opportunities for peace by providing advanced methods of verifying strategic arms control agreements.